In today's video, I am using some of my favorite macro tricks to take shots just like these. Last time I was coming through these woods, everything was dead, everything was brown, and now things are bursting back to life. I've already seen bluebells, I've seen flowers, I've seen mushrooms, I've seen blossom. Ferns are unfurling, leaves are sprouting out. It is a great time to be out taking macro. come here looking for bluebells and lovely spring things, but the first shot I've actually found um, are these sort of slightly withered mushrooms on top of this uh, log. There's a whole patch of them that are all rotten away and black, but there are just a few that still look a little bit more intact. I've taken the tripod head off my other tripod and I've put it on my little mobile one. This is a small rig, uh, little mini tripod, um, and it accepts uh, other tripod heads. So it makes it really, really useful for macro photography because you can get down low, but still have the full stability of a proper tripod head. I use it quite a lot. And if you're interested in buying one, I will leave a link in the description of this video. But the shot I'm looking at, I'm gonna use a wide open aperture, f2.8. Reason being, if I just take this at, let's say, f10, then we get a lot of that background in focus. And as a result, the shot ends up looking really quite messy and chaotic. But if I bring that down to 2.8, and obviously bring my shutter speed back up to about a 60th of a second, then we get a much more light and airy photo where that mushroom stands out from its background. But it does mean that less of it is in focus. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna focus stack the mushroom itself. And I'm gonna use the auto focus bracketing function on my R5, auto focus on the nearest part of the mushroom and the camera will do the rest. I had to get in a slightly precarious position because I found these lovely little flowers basically clinging to this sort of mini cliff. I swapped my lens, I put the 35mm macro on it because I want to try and get a slightly wider scene, capture a little bit more of the sort of context of these flowers. At the moment I'm manually focusing and I'm just playing with different compositions of where I'm going to kind of place each flower. I don't want to focus too close on just one. I want to show that this is a lovely bunch of spring flowers growing together. So I want to try and show the whole bouquet, as it were. I'm hand holding my camera for this. Two reasons. One does help me just get uh, some more ideas because I can sort of move my camera more easily. Two, it's pretty tough to try and get a tripod in any kind of stable position <laughs> when I'm only faintly clinging to this little cliff and not sliding down the hill. A couple of dead leaves that have fallen, I'm just gonna pick those off. I'll never actually pick flowers, never take anything that's actually growing there, but if something dead has just fallen down from the canopy above, then that, I think that's fair enough. I've got this sort of big green leaf, almost as a, as a leading line taking us towards the flowers. But we've also got lovely light coming in um, from the top left of the frame, which is almost uh, giving like it's looking like the flowers are looking up at that sunlight. I've got a nice shot there, but I am also just going to try focus bracketing. But again, just on that middle flower, I still want that depth of field. I don't want the whole thing to be pin sharp from front to back. Actually, while I've been sitting here, I've noticed something else hiding down in all these leaves. Mushrooms, loads of them. All little sort of round caps growing in this uh, dead foliage. No idea what type of mushrooms they are because I'm afraid I'm just not that good. There's quite a few of them. But to be honest, I'm not really sure how photogenic these are. Of course, there is a lot of dense foliage around and I could maybe pick off twigs and 
things to try and uncover them just a little bit more but I'm keen firstly not to touch them because I don't know if these are in any way poisonous but also I don't want to disturb the natural world that I'm here to photograph. So as before I'm going to keep handheld here and that's just hopefully going to allow me to move my camera independently. I'm not having to mess around with a tripod I can just sort of move it around and see if any compositions start to stand out to me. But I think I have found a composition that I quite like because I'm sort of looking underneath this larger mushroom and then there's a smaller one just in front of it but I'm using a very shallow depth of field still so I've got a third that's sort of creating some out of focus bokeh in the immediate foreground. So I want to make sure I still keep a wide open aperture but I'm going to focus stack because otherwise nothing's going to really be in focus so I'm at 55 frames. So I'm using the uh, Zion 5-Ray M40. Now this is a really really powerful um, little handheld LED light. Um, you can take it to very very bright levels and also you can change the color temperature which is great because right now I want it to be a little bit warmer because it is quite a warm scene. It's also got a little kickstand is really handy right now because it means that I can essentially stand it up and have it pointing up towards that mushroom exactly where I want it. What I want is still all of that lovely ambient light that we're getting but just adding an extra little pop of light underneath this bigger mushroom. So if we have a look without it you can see that there's quite a lot of shadow underneath that main mushroom. And it's not that it's bad, it's just that it could stand out a bit more. Ah, oh, a little fly there too. Well, but when I bring this light panel in, you can see immediately just how much it emphasizes all those gills underneath the cap. And that's really what I want here. Again, I'm gonna turn focus bracketing on, because I'm still using a very wide aperture, so very little is gonna be in focus here. I'm hand holding and the camera rattles through those frames. And actually as I was about to walk away from these mushrooms, I've just seen these three um, little starting to unfurl ferns. And they're really nice because there's just three of these stems popping up in amongst these brown leaves. And I think this is going to make for a really, really nice shot. So again, it's absolutely one that I want to use my 35mm, like a wider angle macro, because I don't want to get super close up on these. I want the context of those leaves around them, and I want to get really low to emphasise the height and emphasise the trees around them. So I'm looking for a composition, probably like this, where I've got all three nice and visible. I still want to use a wide aperture to make sure that the background of the... Uh, trees behind the, the ferns that I'm shooting is completely out of focus. So I'm going to be at f1.8. Again, that is going to mean I'm going to need to focus bracket. I'm auto focusing on the closest part and then the camera will rattle through. This is so awesome because I came down through these same woods only a couple of weeks ago and basically everything was brown and dead and I got really disheartened that I didn't find anything that I particularly wanted to shoot. Whereas today I've been in this one little spot and I found three different shots that I think I'm really quite pleased with. It's amazing what a couple of weeks difference makes for things starting to bloom. An absolute treasure trove of mushrooms all clustered underneath this log. These weren't here last time I was here. Let's see if I can get anything good. Maybe they were here and I missed them because they don't look super fresh to be honest. I have noticed there is some broken glass so I'm going to be quite careful. Nope, I'm going to be very careful. So I'm splaying the uh, Travis's legs as wide as they can go. So I've got a really stable grounding and I'm really low down. Found one growing here and we've got this lovely sunlight coming in from the back. We can see the stalk in a really visible way. Also really like this little uh, vibrant bit of, uh, bit of green leaf 
uh, in this scene too. But I also do like that it's actually been quite eaten away here, as has um, its little friend next to it. I think it kind of shows the, the life and death of these things. I do like this, but as with the other one, its cap is casting quite a deep shadow over this stem. So I'm just gonna get my LED light again. But I'm actually now gonna try something a bit different. I'm gonna try blending my light sources. So I'm gonna prop this LED light panel up there just to give the uh, glow underneath the mushroom. I'm also gonna use my Godox AD100 Pro flash. Try and see if I can light it up in a more interesting way. Putting my trigger on the camera, turn this on. So what I've actually done now is I've put that Godox AD100 flash a little bit behind and to the left of the mushroom, as though it's the sort of sunlight coming in through the trees. It gives a really, really nice effect, but I'm gonna to add to that with a bit of a misty water spray. I'm combining flash, LED, and the visual effect of water. So, let's see how this goes. Get my focus point, F8, a hundredth of a second. And I start to spray some mist. And as I'm sort of dribbling these water droplets over it, that flash from behind is coming through, lighting up all of those droplets. I'm just gonna try repositioning the light a little bit by using my camera bag. So I wanna try and make the flash be a little bit higher up, almost like it's firing down. Gonna set the camera to burst mode so I can keep taking these shots as I'm spraying the water. And hopefully one of those should look pretty nice. But I'm not done here yet. I'm gonna swap my lens over to the 100 mil, see what else I can get while I'm here. And actually what I'm done now is I've gone much closer in on this mushroom, filling the frame with the stalk and just having the uh, right hand edge of its cap in the frame. Still got that flash providing a lovely backlight. I've also got my LED panel here lighting up the underneath. But what I wanna try and do using my water bottle is get a lovely water droplet. There's one there, looks great, is it gonna start to drip a little bit more. Oh, it was a lovely big drop. Let's keep trying. It fell and I don't think I got it. Oh, I sort of did. Yeah, okay, I've got one that's enough. But what I'm gonna do is just, because I can't focus stack uh, with the auto tool with uh, using flash, I'm gonna try and do it manually, taking different focus points across the mushroom, including its stem, of course. And then hopefully I can blend those ones together with that water droplet and may have a really nice shot. I'm just pointing my camera now at some of these uh, mushrooms underneath this log because I do think there's some good opportunity here. Holding my flash off down here. But I've gone in quite close looking underneath these mushrooms so we can see those lovely stems, we can see those ridges of the, of the caps. I think this looks nice. love finding old tree stumps. They are so often amazing sources of macro photos. That's absolutely what we've got here because this one is covered in uh, little mushrooms. They're growing all over, they're growing over the front, they're growing over the top, they're in amongst the mosses. I really think there's gonna be some opportunities here. That said, I'm gonna have to still be careful because some of them, there's patches of them over here that look like they are sort of dead and withered, whereas maybe some more over here and on the top, they look a little bit more alive. So I'm going to get things set up and start having a look around for some compositions. Hundred mil macro. These are tiny things and I want to get nice and close up.
And actually the first shot that I wanna get is basically just looking straight at this patch because I love how it completely fills the frame with just this absolute wall of mushrooms. So I'm gonna shoot this at F13 to try and get as much of it sharp as possible. Um, but there's not a lot of ambient light. It's quite a dim day right now. So I'm going at a shutter speed of uh, a third of a second, tapping to focus. And I really like how that looks. Maybe I'll try getting a little bit closer still. Being very careful where I'm putting the tripod legs. I'm really not wanting to damage anything that's growing. Essentially the same shot again, but I'm a little bit closer up, particularly on this one mushroom in the center of the frame that I think is catching the light just that little bit more. It does sort of stand out amongst its friends. But because there are so many mushrooms all over here, all in different positions, some are bigger, some are smaller, I'm gonna spend a bit of time now sort of moving the camera around, trying to find some other shots. So the shot I'm looking at here is these lovely three mushrooms just clinging to the side of the uh, trunk, which has allowed me to use it as some lovely out of focus foreground. Uh, we've also got great out of focus background behind them. So all in all, I think this is gonna be a great shot to use uh, a wide open aperture. So I'm at f2.8. But because I'm using a shallow depth of field, I'm probably gonna have to focus stack this to make sure that everything is nice and sharp. So I'm gonna go into focus bracketing enable number of shots I don't need 55 i'm going to just do 25 and then use my autofocus on the closest point which is probably around here in fact i don't think that was the closest point at all in fact i think that was the furthest point it could have been so let's try again okay that was better but i need more focus points i'm going to do 65 Exactly the same, focusing up close, and the camera will work its way through the scene. And I found another little patch. They look great. Um, again, it's one I'm going to focus stack. I'm going to go with 35 shots here. I'm at f2.8, 50th of a second. There's even more around this side, clustered around this brick and on these mosses. So I'm gonna carry on hand-holding, seeing what else I can find. I'm not using any tripod of any kind because I'm getting much better results just hand-holding doing it myself. Maybe actually on this mushroom, what I'll try is turning to manual focus. And I will try a tiny focus stack. So firstly, it's gonna take a photo of my hand in front of the frame so that I can see when this focus stack is going to begin. shot on the front and then I'm going to twist that focus barrel tiny amount take another twist again like we did last summer twist again like we did last year and hopefully just with those few shots I can put a little focus stack together Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video or at least found it a little bit useful. If you have, then please do make sure to hit that like button and of course, subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.